my gosh, so crispy, so golden. If you like to cook at home, chances are you're using some sort of appliance. We have tested hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of appliances over the years, and some of them can get pretty pricey. We always take price into account when we're testing equipment, and we often recommend a Best Buy option that's really comparable to our winning products. So today, Lisa and I are gonna talk you through some of our favorite inexpensive appliances so you can make great food at home without breaking the bank. First up, Hannah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna kick stuff off with breakfast gear. I have in front of us right here our winning toaster. This is the Dash Clearview Long Slot Toaster, and this beat out toasters that were literally three times the price. This model won for a couple reasons. First of all, that clear view, this window right here, we absolutely love that. You can monitor your toast, you can catch it before it gets too dark. We also love the length of this slot. You can either do two smaller slices or you can do one longer artisan slice. It also has a really compact profile. It stays cool to the touch, so you don't have to worry about burning yourself. Let's make some toast specifically chose a wider artisan bowl shape because I really want to show this benefit because I personally found this really awesome. So put the slice right in there. I'm gonna make a little darker than medium is where I like my toast. So you'll see this whole slice fits in there perfectly. You can see what's going on. I used to have a toaster. Yes, I found it on the side of the road. Don't ask me why I took it, but you know, a shorter toaster and I always ate this kind of bread. So I would rotate it. I would like put it up and then rotate it the other way. It's like, it never worked well. It burned. It was like, I had to come back and like fuss with it all the time. It wasn't a very nice start to my morning. And like, you know, mornings, you want them to be nice and calm. And if you have an annoying appliance at the beginning of your day, your whole day might be bad. Toasters typically either have metal wires or quartz rods as their heating elements and quartz rods tend to be on higher end models. This model here has quartz rods, which is one reason why it won our testing. Quartz rods are really responsive. They heat up and they cool down really quickly. And this results in really even toast. You're not waiting for the machine to warm up on one end. You're not waiting for it to cool down on the other. It's much more precise when you have a quartz rod inside a toaster. And we were really psyched to see a quartz rod in a toaster at such a reasonable price. Oh, hello. So this just popped up. And actually, I do think I want this a little bit darker. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you one of my other favorite features, put it back down. And I'm just gonna hit this button right here, the reheat button. This warms up cool down toast. So you can make sure, you know, you get your hot eggs and your nice warm toast all at the same time. It can also take the toast just a touch further. You know, I don't know if anybody else has ever done this where you think, oh, I want my toast darker and you hit it through another cycle and then it burns and you're like, oh, this helps with that. All right, so my toast's all done. Look at this little lifty lifty. Keep my fingers safe. I love that too. I'm gonna butter up some toast over here and then I'm gonna take a very dainty bite, unlike in the bread machine video. I learned my lesson there. Well, let's take a biggest bite. Just before I butter this, though, like look how beautifully golden that is. But a lot of toasters struggled with this. Some of them, like even their darkest setting, it was still too pale. And others, the darkest setting, we were practically getting the fire extinguisher out. So like a well-calibrated toaster is a thing of beauty and really what we sought out. I'm gonna try this. Mmm, beautiful. Mmm. All right, now for more carbs, onto waffle makers. Historians believe that the first Belgian waffles were introduced to the United States at the 1964 World's Fair in New York City. Belgian waffles are taller than classic waffles, and apparently Americans loved them because these machines are glutting the market right now. We tested a bunch of Belgian-specific waffle makers. We tested all different kinds, flip models like you'll see here that either flip or rotate while you're cooking, and simple models where you're just pour in the batter. So I have the Presto flip side right here, which is our best buy waffle maker. Our winner performed a little better in certain arenas. The Presto controls are really simple. All you can really do is enter the number of minutes you want it to cook for. More expensive models were a little more customizable. You know, you could put the shade, you could enter things a little more specifically. The other slight concern we have is occasionally a little bit of condensation built up in the handle. So when you flipped it over, you had to take care, but it made fantastic waffles. And this is why we named it our best buy. Let's make some waffles. Now I love to use a portion scoop to actually portion the waffles because there are four quadrants, one scoop per quadrant, and you get a perfectly sized waffle that fills in, hopefully, all the cracks and crevices in here. So once I close this up, I'm going to enter the time, put that at four minutes. We found three to four minutes was good for a nice golden brown uh, waffle. And then I'm going to rotate this. Look at that. Whoop. 
And what that does is I poured the batter onto this side, so when you flip it over, the batter flows onto the other side for a really nice, evenly, beautifully shaped waffle. And that's it, and I just wait for this to be done. Okay, so we saw all different kinds of waffles in our testing. Some were pale, some were burnt. To figure out what was going on inside the machines, we attached temperature probes, and we had some pretty interesting results. The machines, to make good, beautiful golden brown waffles, had to get up to 400 degrees. Some of them didn't, and the waffles were too pale. We also didn't want machines to go any higher than 435, because we noticed machines that did turned out cardboardy waffles, and no one wants a cardboardy waffle. It's telling me I have 50 seconds left here, which is nice. Some of these machines took way too long to make waffles. Some of them took longer than five minutes. You know, if you're making waffles for a crowd, you really don't want it to take that long. And also, if it takes longer, they often got dried out and were cardboardy. So three to four minutes was really the sweet spot. All right, so this is all done. Let's check it out. This is pretty good. You know, the first one always comes out a little wonky. Look how beautifully golden brown that is. I think I might have to try a bite, though, to make sure it's good. I gotta be honest, I'm not the biggest waffle person. And you know what? I'm not hiding behind any butter or maple syrup here. Let's check this out. Why do I take the world's biggest bites on camera? This is really good though, actually. You might say, oh, a good waffle, how hard is that to do? Eight of the 13 waffle makers we tested, we could not recommend. So it's actually really hard to make a good, consistent, reliable waffle maker. And Presto did it, and at a reasonable price. Another key component of a breakfast is often a smoothie. It's a really nice, refreshing way to start the day. And personal blenders are a great way to get there. They are smaller, more compact, and they actually allow you to do fewer dishes because the blending cup where you drink your smoothie out of is right on top of the machine. So you make your smoothie, flip it over, put on the sipping lid, and you're good to go. So we do love these. We don't think they replace full-size blenders, but if you make a lot of smoothies or, hey, personal margaritas, no judgment here, you might love one of these machines. So here's our winner by Ninja. It won for a couple different reasons. First of all, this U-shaped jar here. Some of the other models we tested were taller and narrower, and then the food got stuck up near the top, far away from the blades. The food didn't get fully incorporated, so you had like chunky smoothies, icy margaritas. It was no good. This U-shaped really helped keep the food circulating. The other key component was the blade. This is a six-pronged blade, super sharp, tore everything up really quickly, really efficiently. We found the most effective blades for personal blenders were going up and down. That helps develop a really nice vortex so all of the food gets incorporated for nice, smooth smoothies. Some of the blades we tested had like two prongs. They just were not effective. This is a powerful blender. It's not quiet. I'm not gonna say it's quiet by any means, but it is powerful. I'm gonna make this smoothie. It's cherry almond. It is so delicious, frozen cherries. This was developed by my BFF, Ashley Moore, from today's special in Cook's Country TV. Check out her show. I had this when she was developing them and was like, oh my God, I never really bought cherries for smoothies, but they're so good. You don't have to pit them because they're already pitted when they're frozen. All right, little yogurt in here. This is a jar spat. I just want a little shout out to this little guy. Get all the way down to the bottom of your mayo jar, bottom of your peanut butter jar. A little bit banana here, a little bit of milk, some honey. And lastly, a little bit of salt. So we put the blade on like that, turn it to lock it in place, and then you just press down. That was really loud, but I will say it's super powerful. You saw that, that was less than 60 seconds, all this frozen fruit, completely smooth. So at least the noise is not all for nothing. You are getting real power with that. So let's pour it in and see. Look at that. So I also want to show you, it comes with this travel lid. You can just put it on right like that and go. One problem we have with this is it doesn't always fit in car cup holders. It's like a little large for some of them. So something to be aware of, but it was really comfortable to drink from. Just flip this open. Another really key thing about this top is it was leak proof. You could put this in your bag if you're on the go and it won't spill everywhere. Some of the other models made a total mess. Let me try this out. Mm. Is so delicious. So I've showed you some of our favorite inexpensive breakfast appliances. Lisa's gonna show you even more of our favorite inexpensive appliances. I'm about to make a full meal all in my favorite inexpensive appliances. 
First, I'm gonna make aioli, and we're gonna do it in this small food processor. Now, small food processors are a great way to get your foot in the door in the food processor world. You can do a ton of the things that you would do in a full-size food processor, but in this size. We tested a ton of these. Some of the ones we looked at were a little too tiny. Others were up to six cups, and that gets to be into the territory of the large ones without any of the benefits of a real full-size one. And this is our winner. It's by Cuisinart. It's a four-cup food processor. So the reason you get these little guys is their chopping ability. So the blades are very important. We found that these blades were really terrific. They have straight edges. The serrated ones just chewed things up so you get these herbs that look like they were chewed instead of neatly and crisply cut. They are low to the bottom of the bowl and to the sides. Nothing is trapped under there that doesn't get chopped. We measured that in each of them and found that this distance of about three to four millimeters was really ideal. The other thing that this has is two speeds. It's called chop and grind. Chop is for things that are a little bit softer. Grind is when you're doing some things like nuts or hard Parmesan. This also has a patented blade that reverses direction. That's really important because stuff doesn't get stuck as easily. You don't have to get in there with a spatula and clean it out. The other thing that's really great about this model and was not part of some of the other small food processors, this top is not just a handle, it's actually kind of hollowed out and there's two little holes and you can run the machine while you're adding liquids. So it's, it's really great for things like mayonnaise and fresh mayonnaise and aioli are to die for. That being said, let's make some aioli. Now look, they give you a little teensy tiny spatula with a soft rubbery edge. I've got a little bit of sugar, some salt, a cayenne. I've got an egg yolk, a whole egg actually. I've got a little mustard, some lemon juice, tons of garlic for that lovely aioliness. Because this is soft, I'm gonna use chop. I'm gonna do some pulses just to start blending this stuff together. <laughs> And then I'm going to drizzle this oil in while it's running. I was getting excited about being done, but then we add olive oil. The reason we don't add that earlier is that blending olive oil is not that great for it, so we just put it at the end for some flavor. So yet more oil is coming. Here we go. Now it's done. <laughs> This hole is small and the area is not really huge. It probably holds about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of liquid. You want it to go in at a very small, steady drip. Basically, this really helps correct that pour. So yes, you can miss and a couple drops aren't gonna really ruin the recipe if you spill them. The blade is locked in so you can actually pour and scrape without the blade falling into the bowl, which is kind of nice. Look at this gorgeous, fluffy texture, this golden color from the cayenne and the yolks. And when you get down to the bottom, pull the blade out, it pops off. And you can just clean that right off very easily. Now we've made this gorgeous, fluffy, garlicky aioli. I'm gonna make some cod and potatoes in our air fryer, and you can see how great this will go together. We've made videos, everyone else has made videos, of making all kinds of fried food in your air fryer. French fries, chicken nuggets, whatever. But you can also make a real meal. This is not really frying. This is a little convection oven. It's hot, the air is circulating. It's really roasting the food. So we're gonna use it that way. We're gonna make air fryer roasted cod on a lemon garlic potato galette, which does not sound like a bag of french fries. So this is the Go Wise. It's our best buy. It's not our winner. You save a ton of money, but you give up a couple of things. First and foremost, the controls are a little more confusing than on our winner. And the other is that the capacity is a little bit smaller, but it cooks everything beautifully. It has the drawer style, and it does the same thing where it pauses when you open it to stir or turn food and then resume where you left off when you close it again. Uh, first thing that's kind of uh, interesting is we're gonna be putting a layer of shingle potatoes with, with fish on top. And in order to get that out without breaking it up, we do a foil sling. So you just get a piece of foil and you're gonna fold it till it's about four inches across. I'm gonna put this right across and down the sides. And then I wanna make sure that it's not sticking up over the top so it can slide in and out very neatly. You're gonna have some melted butter, some garlic, some salt, some pepper, and you're gonna put this into a bowl. I'm gonna cook them first because they take a little longer to cook than the fish. This is the power button. This side is time, this side is temperature. 
I want this to go for about 16 minutes at about 400 degrees. Halfway through, I'm gonna check it and then we'll resume. So at eight minutes, I'm gonna open this up, see how it pauses, which is nice. You can already see that the potatoes are getting some nice color on them. And I'm gonna use my foil sling. So rotating them is making sure that that air is getting through all of them and browning them evenly. This doesn't really have a problem with it, but we don't leave anything to chance. And then it will resume for another eight minutes. Okay, our potatoes are really brown and crispy and beautiful. So they will be perfect underneath this gorgeous cod. So this is ready to go back into the air fryer for 12 to 15 minutes. And we're gonna rotate it halfway through using that sling. It's at six minutes. I had it in there for 12. Again, we're just making sure that everything uh, gets evenly, evenly cooked. You can already see those lemons are browning and it's looking beautiful. But that's a thick fillet of fish, so we want to make sure it's fully cooked. It resumes. It should be six more minutes, and then we'll check it. Gorgeous. Look at that. I check the fish temperature. Oh, that looks perfect. All right. And I'm just going to lift this out whoop, onto here. Look at those. Oh, my gosh. Basket's pretty clean already. I mean, that's just going to take a little soap and water and a, a sponge, and it'll be clean. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> How pretty is that? Nice little dollop. So crispy, so golden. Fish is still moist and tender. The roasted lemon slices are beautiful. Wow, this fish is perfect. <laughs> that is amazing. Just a few minutes piece of foil for a sling to get it in and out of the air fryer. And remember, it's, this is our budget-friendly air fryer, so you may save some dollars, but you're not sacrificing any of the cooking quality. Now we're gonna make some soup, and we're gonna do it with an immersion blender. We love these things. The immersion blender has a really powerful little motor in the stick here and a little blade at the bottom. And you just put this into a chunky soup after you cook it right in the pan and puree it to the exact texture you want. If you only want to do some of the vegetables or whatever, or all of it, this can do the job right in the pot, no muss, no fuss. This is the Braun Multi-Quick 5. It's our winner for a few reasons. One, it has this nice handle that's comfortable to hold and it turns back a little bit so it stays in your hand. It's got a grippy silicone sleeve here so it doesn't slide. And it's really lightweight for its power so you're not like tired while you're using this. Some of them are just heavy and clunky. This is very easy to manipulate. It has speeds right here, two buttons, and they really did different things. They have different power levels, unlike a lot of the other ones that we tested where they had like a bunch of settings and no difference. Uh, it has really good speed and good sharp blades. And this little housing over it helps the food circulate through the blades so you can get a nice smooth texture. Immerse it into the liquid before you turn it on, because if you have it on and putting it in, you're gonna wear that stuff, whatever it is. This is the motor. This comes off, you wash this in two seconds, and you're done. So let's puree some creamless, creamy tomato soup right in the pot. We're gonna just put it in the pot, and we're gonna turn it on. I like to move it around the pot. You can also leave it in the center, but then only the stuff right around the blade is going in. So I just, chase it around. It is honestly kind of fun. And if you notice there's any bigger chunks that aren't going in, you can like stop and just drop the cage right on top of it. This stops the minute you let go of the buttons and it's not hard to push. Some of them you have to really squeeze it while you're running it and it's a pain. The nice thing is you get ultimate control. You can stop when you think it looks good or you keep going till you think it's really silky. When it's off, you pull it out, release the blades by squeezing these two little buttons here. So let's serve some soup. Look at that beautiful, creamy, smooth texture. Now you're gonna garnish with a little salt, some pepper, a drizzle of olive oil, and some chopped chives. And look at that. Creamless, creamy tomato soup. It's beautiful for yourself or for company. And it just came together in a few minutes using our favorite immersion blender. 
For more information on everything we talked about today, check out the links below or see americastestkitchen.com. We find it so utterly satisfying when something performs really well at a lower price. So if you have an item like this in your kitchen that you love, let us know in the comments because we want to hear about it. And make sure to like this video and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode.